Let's talk about heat engines and the Carnot cycle. I like this new physics cat perverse to sit on something soft. <laughs> biology. Uh, okay, so um, let's look at this right here. So if we have a heat engine, what is that? That's something that actually performs useful work by converting energy to work. That's sort of the definition of a heat engine. So that's an important definition to know. Now, um, let's talk about this and how it really works with these diagrams. So first of all, we have a hot reservoir, we have a cold reservoir, we have this heat engine. And so this hot reservoir is going to have uh, this heat. So this, you know, this energy, we'll call it QH for like hot. And this one here will have Q uh, for cold. Keep in mind, it's also related to like the temperature. So the temperature of the hot reservoir or the temperature of the cold reservoir. So now what happens to this thing is that the hot reservoir, well, then it goes down, I guess, and you can say it's QH like this right here. So this right here gives energy and this one right here, uh, it dumps it into this cold reservoir, which we could call QC. And now what happens is this. Of course, there's some losses. So that means, you know, uh, nothing is perfectly um, uh, efficient. So that means there's always some losses due to energy. Uh, so there's energy losses like friction and all those sorts of other things. So this heat engine isn't perfect. But what happens is it ends up performing what's called useful work. So this is useful work related to the difference in temperature from the hot uh, reservoir to the cold reservoir. This is the important piece right here, this useful work is going to be related to QH minus QC. So when we talk about a cyclic process, what do I mean? It's something that actually can repeat itself. So for example, if we started off with this, you know, point A right here, we went down to B, maybe this is like an isothermal process from A to B and it expands. And then maybe from B to C, well, then it's going to be an iso, let's see, pressure is the same. So isobaric from B to C. And after that, because it's isovolumetric, then from C to A. So something like this, if it goes this way, then this way, then this way, then this way, then this one, this way. This is a cyclic gas process because it follows a cycle. Now, a nice little exam tip is that remember the net change in internal energy in a cyclic process is zero. In other words, delta U equals zero. That's the key thing here. So I want you to know that right there. And there we go. Okay, we have an equation for the efficiency of any heat engine in general, and it goes like this. We have this uh, Greek symbol again to denote the efficiency. We say it's the useful work divided by the input energy. Now, what's not on your data booklet, however, I think is a more useful version of it, which goes like this. Okay, so I like to write it like this and say, well, this is QH minus QC. In other words, the uh, heat from the hot reservoir divided by the uh, heat from the cold reservoir divided by the hot one because that's the input. That's what you put in. So it's like input minus output divided by input. That's sort of how I like to think of it. This is maybe a more useful version. So make sure you know how to use something like this right here. But it's not in your data booklet, but it's nice to know. Now, a little piece right here is that this one here, this uh, symbol here, it is not the same as the viscosity. So just keep that in mind here. We're using a different version. This is the efficiency of any heat engine. Okay, so let's talk about a Carnot cycle. What is that? First of all, it's the most efficient cyclic process in theory. Um, it's not entirely realistic, though, because, of course, there's some energy that's always lost. You know, there's no 100% efficient uh, heat engine. But this is like the best in theory you could do. And it goes like this. You start off at A, for example. So let's say you're, you're starting off there. From A to B, it's an isothermal expansion from A to B. And then it's an adiabatic expansion from B to C. And then it's an isothermal uh, contraction or compression uh, from C to D, and from D to A, it's again an adiabatic compression. So this is how it would work. Now, let's remember uh, this equation here for the efficiency of any heat engine, right? It's just the useful work divided by the input. Now, I prefer uh, to write this version that has the uh, heat, so that's QH minus QC divided by QH. And there's a version that has the temperatures as well. So you could say it's the temperature, so TH, temperature of the hot reservoir, <coughs> minus the temperature of the cold one over the temperature of the hot one. And the reason I put this is because then I can put the temperature of the hot, so I can keep writing it. I can keep going and say, oh, that means it's TH divided by TH. I'm just dividing the first, you know, this divided by this, minus T cold divided by T hot. And look what happens here. This one right here cancels out to be a 1 because TH over TH is just a 1.
So that means we end up with actually the proper equation right here for the efficiency of a Carnot uh, cycle. So I'll write it like this, Carnot equals, well, it's going to be TH over TH, which is 1 minus TC over TH. So I've actually, you know, sort of derived the equation. You didn't need to know necessarily how to derive it, but I think it's nice to see where it came from because this is on your data booklet. And remember that TC is the temperature of the cold reservoir, TH is the temperature of the hot reservoir, those ring Kelvin. And don't forget, uh, for the best efficiency, in case you wanted the efficiency to be as high as possible, um, then what should you do? Well, you want to make this number right here be zero, because you want one minus nothing. You don't want it as efficient as you can be. And to do that, then you want this number to be as small as possible, which means you want to make this denominator as large as possible. So you want TH to be as big as you can and at the same time make TC as small as you can. If you have those, then you have the best efficiency that you could get. So let's do an example with a Carnot cycle. So we have a, a power plant and we can model it as a Carnot heat engine that operates between a hot a reservoir of temperature 651 Celsius, notice it's not Kelvin, and a cold reservoir of uh, 372 Celsius. The question is what's the efficiency? Well, for starters, don't forget, we're going to have to convert the temperatures right here. So remember, it goes uh, T in Kelvin. This is something on your data booklet. Equals temperature in Celsius plus 273. Don't forget that because we're actually going to find this. So uh, the temperature of the hot, let's see that one. We're going to need that one. So temperature of the hot must be, let's see, it's going to be temperature in Celsius. So it'll be 651 uh, plus... 273 and that's what's that 924 Kelvin we also need the temperature of the cold reservoir so what's that that's going to be uh, 372 plus 273 so what's that going to be uh, what's that that's 645 I think oops I didn't write it very nicely did it 645 Kelvin Okay, so now I'm uh, just about done. I just need to know the efficiency, the equation for the efficiency of a Carnot cycle. And we have that, don't we? It just goes 1 minus Tc over Th. And so I'm just going to plug in these numbers. So that means the efficiency then, uh, maybe I'll do it in black right here. So the efficiency then, Carnot, is going to be just 1 minus Temperature in uh, Celsius, uh, Kelvin, sorry, is 645 over 924. Let's do that on my trusty calculator, and away we go. So I'll do 1 minus, and bracket right here, and what did I have? I had 645, divide that by 924. There we go, I end up with, well, that's a fraction. I want that as a decimal, so it's going to be 0.301948. Now that could also be written as a percent if you want, so just move the decimal over by 2. So you could also say it's 30.2%, uh, for example. You could say, oh, this uh, heat engine, so the, yeah, so this power plant, for example, okay, it's not 100% efficient, of course, it's actually 30.2% efficient. Okay, so what if you had actually kept your temperature in Celsius instead of converting them, just to show you right here. Um, well, then you just do 1 minus, and you would have done your temperatures in um, Celsius. And just to show you right here what the answer would have been, it would be 372 over 651. You'd end up with an answer of uh, point, yeah, so 42.9%, for example. And that would have been wrong. So just remember do keep your temperature in Kelvin. I love this uh, little joke right here by XKCD, which is a great website. Uh, look at this, check out my new Carnot cycle. Neat, how fast does it go? Well, it depends how cold it is outside. <laughs> Get it? Because the efficiency of a Carnot cycle depends on the cold reservoir temperature, as well as the hot, of course. But there we go, we're done, we've solved this question.